With me now is Congressman Mike Johnson. He's a Republican representative from Louisiana and a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Congressman, thanks for joining us this morning. Hey, Martin, thanks for having me. So the president says or indicated that he'd like to have a long trial in the Senate complete with witnesses, as we just mentioned, such as Hunter Biden, maybe even the whistleblower testify. Do you agree with that strategy? Well, I understand the, the president's uh, uh, thoughts there. You know, he, he's really been upset. He feels like he's not been afforded due process. We certainly agree with that sentiment. And I think he wants to air his side of this case. You know, at, at every stage of this, uh, with the secret hearings in the, the basement that were uh, uh, championed by Adam Schiff and, and then as it was taken over by Chairman Nadler and our House Judiciary Committee, uh, the Republican side or the Republican defense, the president's defense side, has not been heard. We, we requested nine witnesses originally. We were only afforded three. We were given no fact witness on the, in the Judiciary Committee, which is the one that has actually jurisdiction over impeachment. So the president has been frustrated by this. We have as well. And I understand why he would want to put on that case. But, uh, you know, again, as was said, uh, they'll get to make that decision in the Senate. But just as you outlined there, isn't this a perfect opportunity for the president and his supporters to make his case on his behalf? And calling these witnesses and following those procedures would all go a long way in apparently addressing the grievances you seem to have. Well, no, no, I agree. And I mean, I would be an advocate of having a lengthy trial in the, in the Senate. I, I understand the the uh, arguments and the concerns on, on both sides. But I, I do think there are a number of witnesses that we would certainly like to hear from. It was mentioned here a few moments ago that the whistleblower is someone, uh, even if, if the whistleblower was to testify behind a screen or, you know, in, in camera, as we would say in the courts, that'd be fine. But we'd like to cross-examine the whistleblower. We, we'd like to, of course, hear from Hunter Biden, because I do believe that's at the center of this whole controversy. So we'd have to see how that would progress and how long it would take. But under the Constitution, of course, the Senate has broad discretion and authority on how they want to handle that, and I, I think that's the discussions they're having right now. What about calling other witnesses such as, say, I don't know, Mike Pence, uh, let's talk about Mulvaney, Pompeo, all of those to testify. They could be critical witnesses here. They've been denied so far, so why not bring them on in the Senate? You know, that's the center of uh, their, their second claim, their second article of impeachment that they brought is that somehow uh, the, the, the president is, uh, is obstructing Congress. And that's just simply uh, a, a crazy allegation. It really is. And we explained well, that in the Why do you say committee. it's crazy if they have well, denied any of the testimony coming from what are clearly key members of this administration who have well, insight? The, the, the reason we say that is because it's, it's a very customary thing. It's a very common thing. In fact, every administration, virtually everyone in the modern era, has done exactly the same thing. The previous administration, uh, President Obama, uh, during the Fast and Furious uh, investigation of Congress, he denied subpoenas. That was not an impeachment inquiry. This is a very different animal we're talking about here. Well, and asking those who are in charge of this administration or directly involved with either the calls or the claims of what the president did or did not do seem to be perfect witnesses to have and come forward rather than deny them. This is a very unusual uh, set of circumstances and it should be the highest level of transparency and due process. In fact, uh, the Democrats famously said back during the, uh, the Nixon impeachment that it should be due process quadrupled. They've done exactly the opposite this time. They've not afforded the president all of those, those rules and procedures and, and what the Constitution uh, really is supposed to guarantee for him. So that's the reason that they've been very reluctant. I mean, I'm an attorney. If I was advising the president, I would have told him not to participate in that charade either. These, these sound like hyperbolic terms, but it's the best way we can describe what happened in the early stages of this, and that's why the president's been so reluctant. These points have been brought up before. Let me ask you about a new one, which is Mitch McConnell, and that he is a member of the Senate, and thereby he is supposed to be impartial. Yet he has made it clear that he's going to coordinate closely with the White House on this impeachment trial. Um, here, just listen to what he said. Everything I do during this, I'm coordinating with White House counsel. We'll be working through this process, hopefully in a fairly short period of time, in total coordination uh, with the White House counsel's office and the people who are representing the president in the well of the Senate. Where is the impartiality there? And it has to be a concern because, as you point out, you are an attorney and you would be worried if a member of the jury had already stated how they were going to consider. 
Yeah, we, we heard those comments yesterday, as everyone did. And, you know, I've actually talked about this with some of my Democrat colleagues, those who are very much in favor of impeachment. I said, isn't it a fair uh, uh, description of what he said? The way I heard that is that Mitch McConnell is talking about the scheduling of the trial, what, what length of trial or, or what would be involved in that with the White House, which is not unprecedented. That's what happened in the Clinton uh, uh, proceedings as well. They coordinated with the White House on scheduling. I don't think he's talking about the merits of the case. I think he's talking about how long will be allowed for all this to go forward. And so I don't think there's anything inappropriate about that. So you see it completely different than as a, as sounding like a juror who has made up their mind, essentially. I, I do, and I think that's a fair interpretation of those comments. And I, I, as I said, I've had some of my Democrat friends acknowledge that that may be fair. fair. They hear it differently, of course. They interpret mm -hmm. it differently. But I, I think it'd be up to uh, Mitch McConnell to explain further what he meant, and I'm sure he'll do that in the, in the days ahead. And I've asked this of, of many of our guests, and I'd like to ask it of you, because this is the first time you and I have had a chance to have this conversation. The president has described that July phone call with Ukraine's president as perfect. Mm -hmm. Do you think it was perfect? Do you think it's appropriate for the leader of the free world, essentially the president of the United States, to ask for a political favor in exchange for financial aid? Well, I don't think this is a fair interpretation of, of what happened there. What we know by the evidence, and believe me, we reviewed it for 14 well, why straight do you hours. Say, wait, why do you say that? I mean, because I've got the <laughs> quote right here from the president. I would like you to do us a favor because our country has been through a lot and Ukraine knows a lot about it. I would like you to find out what happened with this whole situation with Ukraine. They say crowd strike. I guess you have one of your wealthy people, the server. They say Ukraine has it. Um, that's an allegation against what is a very false pretense. It's already been debunked. The president said, I'd like to ask you for a favor. For, for us, he said, for the country. And, and what is very clear from the I whole record. He didn't say for the country. He says for us. I grant well, you that. Let, let, me, let me answer it, Martin, because if you look at all of it in context and you look at the evidence that was actually gathered in the first hand testimony, and there's only one fact witness, that's Ambassador Sondland, who had direct knowledge of this. Everything else is hearsay, conjecture, and speculation. But what we know is four very simple facts. Number one, there was no pressure exerted because both President Trump and President Zelensky said that. Do you really um, that, believe that President Zelensky, a man who is facing an invasion by a Russian military force, is going to honestly push back against the one true funder of their defense, which is the United States. In other words, do you believe he's really being genuine when he says that? I, I do, and to say otherwise would be to question his integrity, and I don't think that that is something anybody in this country wants to do. We also know the other important fact there is there was no conditionality. The president didn't condition the, the, the uh, military aid and assistance with that investigation. The investigation never happened. They never started one. The uh, Ukraine did get the aid, and importantly, the Ukrainians right. we, have we, all said they didn't know this about before. the delay. Yeah, the yeah. Other well, those thing, are important facts. Well, and then there is this fact. The president, same call, says the other thing. There's a lot of talk about Biden's son, that Biden stopped the prosecution, and a lot of people want to find out. This implies that he is seeking some sort of information on a man he believes he's likely to run against for re-election. Well, again, I don't think that's a fair uh, summation of all the facts. They never talked about, uh, when, with Zelensky and, and President Trump, there's nothing in the record ever that they were talking about or even implying or thinking about 2020. This is about the controversies that erupted in 2016. That's what the president had in mind. He talks all the time about his great concern of American taxpayers' treasure being squandered overseas and being misused. And you've got to remember here the full context. Ukraine is, is regarded by everyone to be the third most corrupt nation in the world. And so the president had a very well-documented concern. It is acknowledged there is a corruption problem that Ukraine had prior to this new administration. Hopefully that's going to change. But he doesn't mention all of the corruption. He mentions a specific aspect, which in this case is the vice president's son and Joe Biden, who is likely to be a running uh, a candidate he'll run against. Well, right. But if you again, if you look at the context, of course, that's one of the greatest scandals in, in the modern history of Ukraine. Hunter Biden was paid uh, tens of thousands of dollars a month to serve on a board of a corrupt so company that was owned by an oligarch? Why would the president seek that investigation? Why wasn't it handled by the appropriate means in the United States? Well, why did it require the president calling up on a phone call and saying, I'd like you to do us a favor? This well, doesn't I, seem the right process, does it? 
Well, look, the, the president is a hands-on leader. He is, he is, this is one of his uh, chief concerns. He talks about it all the time. He has, since before he ran for president, the, mm -hmm. the misuse and, and the squandering of Ameri ta American taxpayer dollars overseas and in corrupt countries. It's always been a top concern. Go back and look at his Twitter feed. He talks about it all the time. So this is completely appropriate. And, and I think it's, it's applauded by many American people. The, the America first, as, as America being the first priority, is what he ran on, and that's what he does consistently. And I, I think people appreciate that. I don't think they want our taxpayer dollars being sent over to corrupt countries and, and well, being were, misused. Well, they were withheld for a example time of against the wishes of both Congress, and of course it was taxpayer money. I do appreciate you coming on, Congressman. I thank you very much for taking part. And we will look forward to what comes next week. Thank you, Martin. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, sir.